here's a quick outline of my presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, to begin with, I'll be presenting a brief discussion on the background of the study, the conceptual framework, and the study methodology after which I will then move on to major empirical findings on the key themes of the study first and foremost, ICT development for promoting a more innovative and inclusive society. Second, ICT, gender, e-livelihood, and e-entrepreneurship. And third, digital infrastructure development. Let me just point out uh, before I start that, you know, um, the this, this survey was done pre-pandemic. No? It was on 2019. So whatever we, we say is still in a way old news. No? Uh, because we know that we, with the pandemic, we also had experienced, uh, we were forced to digitalize much more. So anyways, uh, in this discussion, we'll be closing with some policy issues moving forward, and some of this may have already been addressed by the ICT. To begin with, uh, we know that digital technologies and other emerging technologies of the fourth industrial revolution have disrupted our ways of doing things drastically change business models and the nature of work. But while digitalization has grown considerably, not everyone has benefited from development benefits from ICT. While internet use has been rising, still many are not connected to the net. And even if they are, they do not fully harness ICT. Prior to the onset of the novel coronavirus or COVID-19, the Philippines has had a robust broad-based growth and there was recognition that ICT infrastructure development would be needed to sustain economic activity, encourage investments, and lay the ground for further innovation. COVID unfortunately changed the economic landscape, but we still recognize that in a post-COVID world, ICT is likely going to be one of the dr main drivers of more economic activities in the country. Technology, however, can worsen inequalities. Hence, it is crucial to have policies that should make digital dividends inclusive. The government, through the ICT, has put in place an ICT policy environment to hasten digitalization in the country. Many, many, many plans are laid out in the Philippine Digital Transformation 2022, including the e-government master plan. And the ICT has also led in the formulation of the National Broadband Plan. We also have in place a number of ICT regulations and policies. But amid all of these policies, we do have a major barrier for ICT development. The dearth of many ICT statistics. We cannot expect to manage well what we do not measure. The Philippines, unfortunately, next slide please, has been suffering from a lack of availability of official statistics on ICT especially on the access and use of ICTs by households and businesses. Many of these statistics are needed, very needed, to monitor our Philippine Development Plan and our success in attaining the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. Of the seven indicators on ICT among the 232 indicators for monitoring the SDGs, only one is available the percentage of the population covered by a mobile network broken down by technology. For the results matrix of the Philippine Development Plan, only three out of the required 14 indicators are available. Such data gaps are contributing to the lackluster scores of the country in international benchmarking exercises, as these depend mostly on available data. The DICT, however, has taken a very positive step in addressing ICT data gaps with the conduct of the National ICT Household Survey or NICTHS. This survey, as was mentioned, was conducted by DICT in partnership with the PSRTI. By the way, PSRTI is the assister agency of PIDS in NEDA. 
it is the first ever household survey in the country that focuses on ICT. It involved interviewing over 40,000 households. This survey was supplemented by information gathered from barangay leaders on the presence of telco services in the surveyed areas. There were three survey instruments, a community questionnaire, second, a household questionnaire, and third, an individual questionnaire. Our examination of the NICTH has revolved around several policy questions on first, ICT access, use, and from the standpoint of households and individuals and the communities where they reside. Second, ICT connectivity in relation to inclusiveness, digital skills, e-livelihood, and e-entrepreneurship and online protection in the country. And third, policies and strategies of the digital economy while ensuring that the digital dividends are inclusive. Our study on the NICTHS is guided by a framework of analysis based on the World Bank's 2016 World Development Report on Digital Dividends. It looks principally on ICT access of households and ICT use of persons within the households in as far as they promote inclusion, efficiency, and innovation. As I mentioned earlier, we sought to focus our analysis on three key themes. Can you go to the next slide, please? And the next part of our, my, the presentation will discuss these themes, though, of course, I don't have enough time to go into all details. You have to read the discussion paper. For each of these themes, we will, I'll try to give you a brief literature review, followed by the main survey findings. Now, as far as the first key theme is concerned, how ICT development promotes a more innovative and inclusive society, let me point out that as of January of this year, as much as three-fifths of the world's population or approximately 4.7 billion people are using the internet. But that also means 40% or 3.1 billion are not connected to the net. In the Philippines, we can similarly see a big share of the population using the internet. But we also lament that not everyone is connected. And even when people use the net, most of the time they seem to be on Facebook, on social media. They're not harnessing ICT very well. Where, while ICT can be empowering and it can promote social good, unfortunately, it can also exacerbate existing inequalities. Advances in ICT and other frontier technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, which at the IDS we refer to as FIRE, are observed to have generated unprecedented, enormous wealth in record time. But that wealth has also been largely concentrated around a small number of persons like Elon Musk. Companies and countries. In developing countries like the Philippines, where the lack of digital infrastructure and regulatory bottlenecks hamper broadband development, a big issue is that access to the net through mobile or fixed broadband seems to be very expensive. The 2019 National ICT Household Survey, next slide please, results reveal that less than half of Filipinos use the internet in the last three months in, during the serve, when the survey was con being conducted. 75% of Filipinos own a cell phone, at least as of that time, and 24% of households own the computer. When data are disaggregated by geographic location, education, and age of persons, we will find significant digital divides. For instance, internet use is much higher in urban areas, 57%, versus rural areas, 36%. We find lower device ownership, cell phones, computers, and lower quality of connectivity. 
in rural areas and less metropolitan areas or regions such as Barm, Bicol, Western Mindanao, and Northern Mindanao, while higher proportions are found in NCR and neighboring Calabar Zone and Central Luzon. These survey results also indicate that older adults and persons with less schooling have low ownership and use of devices as well as access to the net. As far as digital skills are concerned, the NICTHS results reveal that we have very low digital skills in the country. Only two out of five Filipinos are digitally skilled. Having at least one of the ICT skills identified in SDG indicator 4.4.1 or the proportion of youths and adults with ICT skills by sex and type of skills. Across age groups, it seems that the youth aged 15 to 24 years old are much more ICT skilled than the all other age groups, although the youth also tend to use much more gaming than most among all computer-related activities. Between sexes, slightly more females, 41% of them are ICT skilled compared to 38% for males. But if we examine this in combination with age, we will see interesting nuances. For instance, we might see that the young population aged 10, 10 to 24 years old, more females are skilled, while among the working age and older adults, more males are skilled. Next slide, please. When we compare our skills with those of our ASEAN neighbors, oh my gosh, based on similar data found in SDG indicators, global database of the United Nations, we find that the Philippines lags among ASEAN members. We are only faring slightly better than Thailand in five out of six skills, except on using basic arithmetic formulas in a spreadsheet. In other words, di tayo marun mag-excel. Now, next slide, please. According to We Are Social, the Philippines is the social media capital of the world. With nearly four hours media. The NICTHS results suggest that 94% of Filipino netizens use the internet for communications or social media. A far second and third among computer activities of netizens in the Philippines is accessing information at 44% and leisure or lifestyle at 37%. <clears throat> Meanwhile, online, online transactions, online transportation navigation, content creation, and professional search are not very common for Pinoy internet users. Of course, we have to remind ourselves that these data were prior to the pandemic, as I mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. Only 7% of Filipinos that do online, actually do online transactions, uh, and of which the purchase of goods and services is the most common activity at 21%. It's an activity of 23% of urban residents and 16% of rural residents. As for online selling, it's found to be the least common online transaction. Also, Filipinos, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they do online pay payments and online banking, but a lot rarer than online purchases. It seems cash is largely used in online purchasing or selling. 80% of online sellers and 72% of online sellers are using cash on delivery, COD. Uh, we, we refuse to use e-money. I don't know why. It's so easy, you know? But of course, new data from Google Temasek E-Economy SEA report for 2020, and even uh, now the new report, suggests that we have had a big rise in the use of digital services in the Philippines, including e-banking and e-money. So it seems that was the unintended consequence of the pandemic. Now we're, much, we're using much more of digitalization. NICTHS results also reveal that majority, 42% of Filipinos, do not use electronic payments in online purchases, largely because of security concerns, especially in giving personal and and uh, card details. Lack of awareness about e-payment 
is another reason for not using e-money. In the next slides, I'll be presenting findings on ICT and online entrepreneurship from a gender analysis lens. The literature suggests that there's actually a gender divide in ICT use in some countries. In South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, women appear to be 8% less likely than men to even own a mobile phone and 20% less likely to own a smartphone. Studies also find disparities in skills. While ICT specialist skills are more present among male than female workers, though with the variation with depends on the industry. In a further probe into the gender dimensions in ICT, UNESCO in 2019 found that interestingly, there's a gender ICT gender equality paradox. Countries with better achievements of gender equality, such as those in Europe, have the fewer share of a much fewer share of women who pursue skills needed for ICT jobs. And conversely, countries with low levels of gender equality, such as those in the Middle East, have the largest share of women pursuing ICT degrees. In the Philippines, we actually did some work at PIDS for the Department of Science and Technology's Science Education Institute. We found that the gender gap, uh, that while there's a gender gap in the total number of people who finished ICT degrees, um, uh, it, this, this gender gap is a little bit small. However, the labor participation of women, 70% with ICT degrees, is 23 percentage points lower compared to men at 93%. Results of the NICTHS show that women appear to be at par at women and even to some extent in some aspects per outperform men. There are relatively more women, 81% than men, 77% who, who, who use a cellular phone, but there are no disparities found between men and women in internet and computer usage. More women than men even have online buying or selling accounts, and a slightly bigger share of female internet users, 5%, are engaged in online selling compared to men at 4%. However, on average, male online sellers still are earning more than female sellers at 10,900 pesos compared with about 6,000 pesos for female uh, sellers. Among women, a uh, majority of online sellers are employed. Self-employed women and housewives comprise a sizable share of women sellers at 36%. We conducted some basic econometric modeling and observe that ceteris paribus, engagement in online selling is more likely for women, married persons, and more educated persons. Holders of ICT degrees are also more likely to enter into online selling. As a person becomes older, there's also a greater chance of engagement in online selling, but this reverses more older person. Those who live in rural areas are less likely to engage in online selling. The unemployed, self-employed workers, and students are more likely to sell online than employed persons. Homemakers are less likely to engage in online selling in comparison with employed workers. And now let me turn to digital infra issues. We should note that an integral part of the digital infrastructure is the internet and that different network segments, for instance, the international link, backbone, middle mile, last mile, they all make up the value chain of internet connectivity. With the availability of data from the NICTHS, the infrastructure gap and digital divide in the country can be examined from a supply-constrained lens. NICTHS data suggests that cell signal reaches 92% of surveyed barangays with 3G technology, however, being the much more prevalent in rural areas. Despite near universal access to electricity, some communities, especially in BARM, have low access to telco towers, fiber optic cable, and free Wi-Fi. Only a third of the barangays have a telecommunications tower located in their community. Urban barangays, 61%, 
have three times more telco towers than rural communities at 19%. Almost all of these towers, 95%, are privately owned. Among barangays without a telco tower in their vicinity, some may still have access to a cell signal. 4G reaches only 61% of all barangays, with urban barangays 83% having about twice as much more access compared to rural ones at 44%. Meanwhile, 3G is still prevalent in rural areas. Only 12% of all the barangays have access to free Wi-Fi. The government's in other words, the results, these results from the NICTHS are suggesting that the government's free Wi-Fi for all program is still very, 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 very far from achieving its goal to providing internet access nationwide. The relatively low number of free Wi-Fi sites is a symptom of a larger ICT infrastructure gap. Only about 29% of barangays have a fiber optic cable, FOC, network that's installed in their communities. 53% urban barangays, percent rural ones. Although fiber, fiber offers the highest bandwidth and reliability, but it's still primarily concentrated in urban areas because it's very expensive to deploy in areas with low population density. As regards internet service providers or ISPs, one in five barangays have no ISPs. All regions except Ilocos have more ISPs in urban than in rural areas. That 8% of barangays in Metro Manila do not even have ISPs shows that even that there is also a digital divide even within cities. Households we already mentioned earlier, have near universal access to electricity. This is consistent with the earlier result I mentioned about from the NICTHS barangay data and also results of the 2020 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey that's conducted by the Philippine Statistics Authority, another sister agency, NEDA. A significant portion of households still, however, a lot of broadcast. Less than 2 million households are using a fixed uh, telephone, only a quarter, 24% of households own a computer. I mentioned this earlier with laptops, 66% as the most common type, followed by tablets at 39% and desktops at 25%. A quarter of households own a communal cell phone, 44% of which are in urban areas and 56% in rural areas. Only 18% of households have an internet connection. Majority of them are using fixed wired uh, Wire, uh, wired broadband connection, NCR has the highest proportion of these households at 33%, while BARM, believe it or not, has the lowest at 4%. On average, Filipinos are spending, Filipino households are spending 1,300 pesos monthly on their internet connections with much higher spending in urban areas, 1,400 pesos than in rural areas at 1,000 pesos. Households without internet access subscriptions report that cost is the main bottleneck, whether of the internet subscription itself or of the equipment. Availability of internet is another barrier, especially in rural areas. As regards individuals' access to and use of digital infra, 9 out of 10 Filipinos have access to a television, which shows that TV is still going to be king, especially for the campaign. Four out of five Filipinos have used a cell phone. The highest usage is among the young, aged 18 to 34. One out of three have used a computer. Half have used the internet in the last three months before the survey was conducted through largely a mobile phone at 85%. Internet usage is highest in Luzon among major islands, and highest in na the national capital region, 66% among regions, and much higher in urban areas, 57%. Finally, we turn to some policy issues and suggested ways forward. Can you go to the next slide, please? Next slide, please.
Okay. Uh, all right. So we, despite being in the digital age, I think you can go back a little bit. One slide before that. Okay. Um, we turn to these policy issues. Uh, clearly, despite being in the digital age, many of our policies in the country are pre-digital. Can you imagine? We still want to keep even signing physically, no? <laughs> rather than having use a, a digital signature. The NICTHS data shows that ICT access is still far away for many of our countrymen, and a key policy thrust on ICT development thus should be on improving coverage and quality of connectivity, and I hope this becomes a, a, a campaign issue. The program such as the National Broadband Plan in public services, it's important monitoring of rural and um, remote communities for these programs. Uh, we should also be working on, for improving digital liter literary skills. Um, the DICT can partner with other government agencies and the private sector to spread much more information about the importance of digitalization. The internet, ICT, and all this uh, technology empire cybersecurity among the citizens. Filipinos should also get engaged not just in social media, but also in e-commerce and digital finance. Citizens, however, must be informed about the safe use of the internet, cybersecurity, and related matters. Still into the subject of digital literacy, next slide please, we ought to pursue policies for reskilling the workforce particularly in improving digital skills. And it's essential that the gap of ICT skills and usage between the youth and older people, between the educated and less educated, be bridged. We need to carefully examine our ICT skills gaps and how ICT skills may be harnessed fully. Specifically, some behavioral research. Uh, I think we can go to the next slide. Slide. Yes, um, some behavioral research will be needed to uncover how can we incentivize people so that we can use ICT effectively. We need to also address issues that constrain people's ability to take advantage of online platforms. Efforts must be made to streamline access to formal institutions and its processes such as digital banking and online government transactions. Furthermore, improvements in ICT infrastructure should enable greater ICT usage for everyone, help maximizing the benefits that can be reaped from digital platforms. Despite the widespread cell signal coverage and mobile device ownership, internet usage in the country remains very low owing to poor and expensive internet connectivity and inadequate digital infrastructure, especially outside the national capital region. The NICTHS results show that the con that connectivity problems in the Philippines is caused mainly by our analog era policies and laws, such as the Radio Control Law, the Public Service Act, and the Public Te Telecommunications Policy Act. Government investments in digital infrastructure must target network segments and areas where the market fails to deliver. The government may also consider investing in areas where the private sector has difficulty competing and making a profit. However, the most critical role of the government is to introduce and enforce policies to address the accessibility, affordability, and quality of the internet. Outdated laws have stifled the growth of ISPs by restrict restricting network building to enfranchised telecom companies only. Government should remove regulatory barriers and expand market opportunities to allow players to invest, build, and innovate regardless of size ownership and technology. Republic Act 7925, which promotes local exchange or landlines, can you imagine, should be changed in the wake of the emergence of new digital technologies. 
radio spectrum is also currently assigned only to telcos and mobile network operators. That has to change. Fast tracking the passage of certain laws that are pending in Congress, such as the Open Access and Data Transmission Act or House Bill 8910 and the Better Internet Act or Senate Bill 1831 can help address the digital infra gap. House Bill 8910 allows more players to participate in building broadband networks. Meanwhile, Senate Bill 1831 introduces rules to in ensure internet service reliability and quality of service metrics. The executive and legislative branches should work to pass these laws with urgency. Bilis kilos, as they say, you know? It's essential to introduce internet op uh, connectivity laws such as the Open Access in Data Transmission Bill. These bills can address the demands of the digital age, make the country competitive, and use ICT to achieve economic recovery coupled with sustained inclusive wealth creation. Finally, we suggest that the ICT regularly conducts the NICTHS, preferably every two or three years, and improve on the current survey design and implementation, including, for instance, collecting data on assets so that we can analyze the digital divide between the poor and the non-poor. The survey should also have much more than one respondent per sampled household, and also preferably involve more parties and experts to improve the questionnaire design. We also recommend the ICT keep updated about international statistical standards particularly in measuring ICT development. Furthermore, the DICT can work together with PSA towards experimenting with digital skills measurement to check with the possibility of merging this measurement within functional literacy, which is uh, done in the functional literacy, education, and mass media survey of the PSA. This ends my talk. Thank you.